Hi Thrivers, today we're going to talk about why the energetic ties to narcissists are so powerful and how you can break free from them. And that is so important because the Thriver way is more than just learning about narcissists, it includes how to heal for real from them. Okay, so today we're going to look at why and how the ties to a narcissist get formed. We're then going to look at what your half of the magnet is and I'm going to explain that as we go through this video and also how to completely eliminate the ties and get free. Okay, so let's get going. Why and how the ties get formed with a narcissist? Okay, this you really need to know. Narcissists need to ensnare you. They need to hook you up for narcissistic supply. They've got to bond with you. The reason for that is because the narcissist's sole purpose in life is to get enough narcissistic supply that they can offset their empty, devoid, crippled inner being, which is always giving them the feedback that they're uh, dysfunctional, they're not good enough, that they're defective. So they need attention from outside of themselves to prop up significance and the ego to offset that inner void. That's narcissistic supply. So a narcissist needs to hook you up and have you as a source of narcissistic supply or other people as a source of narcissistic supply. So they need to create with you, if they've chosen you as a source, you will have a dependency on them. There's an emotional hook hooking you to them. Now this is where you need to understand how and why, you, that's the why, why they do it. Now how it works is, a narcissist in your life is going to position themselves as a source of one of four things. And it's always one of four things. It's going to be love, approval, security, and survival. So if the narcissist in your life is a parent or a close family member, or even a teacher or an authority figure, well then you're going to see them as a source of approval. If it's a parent, it's love because a parent is supposed to love you. They're supposed to care about you. If it's somebody new that's coming into your life, if you've felt like you were small and you were insignificant and you haven't had the feedback of being worthy of love and approval, a narcissist can work that out very, very quickly and they can really see you and get you and hear you. And you can feel like a person in a desert getting a drink. You feel like finally, this is somebody who gets me, somebody who does love me, who does uh, make me feel worthy of love and approval. And security and survival are really, really big things. And of course, a parent or somebody significant in our life, it could even be a boss. You know, that's where you get your money from. So you're gonna feel like, I need to have this person in my life. I need it to be okay with this person in my life. And of course, this relates back to survival. And for especially um, a lot of us who've been narcissistically abused, if you've got abandonment wounds, you may feel like if you don't love me and you leave me, how can I survive? How am I going to live? We can have really deep primal traumas that get triggered. So the narcissist will create a bonding with you where either uh, subconsciously or even consciously you feel like this person has to be in your life for love, approval, survival or security. And it can be deeply unconscious. But how we know that we're actually trauma bonded in this way is when you imagine leaving or saying enough or walking away from this person, the feelings will be, how am I gonna cope? How can I live my life without this person? How am I gonna go on without them? Okay, so this goes on to the next point, which I told you I was gonna to explain to you, which is your half of the magnet. Now, when we have a bonding with a person, an unhealthy, tie, which it so is with a narcissist, 
what we have to understand is your part of the acceptance, your half of the magnet, means that at some level, either consciously and often unconsciously, you are granting permission, you're co-colluding with this tie. So even though it's painful and it's traumatic and you're getting abused, there's a part of you that is invested in holding on to that part of the tie. So this is your half of the magnet. And when we have the relationship between, we'll just call it a codependent, which all of us are and even narcissists are, codependent meaning trying to seek wholeness of self from outside of self, narcissists do it too. That's really what's bringing the magnet together. You have the narcissist, their tie to you is, is I can't be an energy source to myself. I need you for narcissistic supply. I need you for attention. I need you for your energy. I need you for your stuff. I need you to give me the feedback for good or bad that I'm significant because I can affect you in that way. And our half of the magnet is, is you know, you are a source to me of love, approval, survival, and security, or all of those things. That's a dependency. So what is our half of the magnet when we're in a trauma bond with a narcissist? What it is, is this, that in some way, you're not being a source of love, approval, survival, and security to yourself. So for example, if you grew up in a household where you didn't feel worthy of love and you didn't know that you were lovable just for being yourself, if you thought love was conditional and it was based on your performance or whatever it was, or maybe your parents were, were in survival or they had their own wounds or maybe they were addicts or maybe they were narcissistic, where you didn't feel that you were loved for you, that is your half of the magnet where it is, you know, I don't feel lovable. I don't feel approved of. I've never been able to grow that up into a solid state for myself. So you came into my life or as a parent, you're meant to be in my life, the love and approval. And either it was meant to be there and that's our expectation, or maybe as in the case of a friendship or a boss or a love interest, the narcissist love bombed and you felt so loved and approved of and so held and seen and met that you bonded to that person and they have now become your source. So what, that, what happens with that is when it does the bait and switch and when the narcissist starts withdrawing and degrading and devaluing and discarding, you, you're hooked in there trying to get that love and approval rather than loving and approving of yourself enough to let go, detach and heal up that relationship with yourself and with security and survival. You know, you may be in a relationship with somebody where it's their money that is your security and your survival. And maybe you, you're not working and you're not a source of those things to yourself. Or maybe it is your boss. Or maybe it's your parent that's putting the roof over your head. And you feel this person really then can own you. And they can hurt you. And you can stay attached to that. And definitely as children, when we were young little people, we didn't have the ability at five to say, mum, dad, you're narcissistic, you're abusive, I'm going to leave you and I can be these things to myself. Of course you couldn't. But as adults, what we're needing to do is heal up that dependent, broken little child within that is not yet a source to self to be able to say, you know what, I, I don't have to accept your brand of so-called love or so-called approval or security or survival that has strings attached to it, that is abusive, that I have to earn and I have to twist myself into so many different shapes to try to get those crumbs from you, I can say no to that. So this is our half of the magnet is understanding that nobody 
can take your power without your approval. And when we're attached to false sources, we have unhealthy bonding and dependencies. And really what this saying is, we're in that position because of needing to become a source to self to take our power back. Okay, which leads me on to the next point, which is how to completely eliminate the ties. There is only one way with a narcissist and really with anybody, but even more so with a narcissist. You can't force people to change in order to be a different way to give you love, approval, survival and security. Because this actually isn't even about them. This is about being able to be love, approval, survival and security to ourselves so that we have a freedom in choice to say, I can choose things that are healthy that are going to add more to that. And I can say no to things that do have agendas connected and abuse and somebody is brokering deals in their own favor at my expense because of my dependencies. So how do you break free from those ties? There is a need to heal and shore up the parts of yourself that have had the gaps. So for example, with love, and this is so true, this is key, we will only accept a level of love that matches the level of love we have for ourselves. So when we do love and approve of ourselves and we have true source, which is a connection through our higher power, our belief in super conscious, life force, God, whatever you want to call it, where you have a relationship between you and life that is wholesome and healthy and invested in your own personal growth. Well, then we know it's such a false premise to try to get that from somebody else. You know, even if they were healthy and we need to get love through somebody else, what's gonna happen on a day when they're unavailable and they're not loving you? Or they've got their own stuff, or they're not, they're not available. If we don't have a relationship of love and approval between ourselves and all of life, well then we're unhealthily, obsessively, bonded to somebody whether they're healthy or not and if people are healthy and we're bonded in that way they're going to walk away because it is not their responsibility to give us love for ourselves that is our responsibility and then we can have boundaries and limits and honest conversations and 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 co-generation of love with others you can't actually have you can't give and receive what you don't already have so that's, that's key. With security and survival as adults, whether you're male or female, and we really have to get clear about this because I know a lot of you haven't worked for a long time or you've lost so much in narcissistic abuse. But again, if we're going to stay victims and we're going to be entrenched in dependencies, you've already handed your power away. And this I love about thriving is when we heal those security and those survival dependencies and we become empowered and self-generative with all of the unlimited permutations, opportunities, miracles and flourishing and nourishing from all of life. There is no limit to what your experiences have been, what your age is or anything. God, source, your higher self is ready to bless you and take care of you when you start taking care of you. But when we're stuck on a dependency or we're saying, well, I can't leave and I can't do this and I can't do that. I promise you, I've seen people walk away from mansions, million dollar lifestyles and abuse and literally go into uh, trauma relief houses go into rescue houses with nothing the clothes on their back and they have even in their 60s and 70s they have generated a life they've generated their own survival and security 
They've come out following their missions and their truth and source has guided and granted them a new love and everything that they've ever wanted for real. Because with a narcissist, it's a false life. You know, there is such a price to pay for the dependencies to a narcissist and that's where they want you. So how to break the ties is you can't force them to let you go fix it, give you the closure, give you the relief, give you the money that they should give you or even the settlement they should give you so that you can move on. This is about you healing with this between you and source and life and your traumas. This has got nothing to do with them because when you make it about you, then you can get the settlements. You can get the dissolution of what's been going on. You can get the closure, you can move forward. And life says, okay, well now that you've honored you and you're in a being and you wanna partner with me, I'm gonna partner with you back. But holding them accountable and responsible and trying to force them to do the right thing equals how to lose all the way. And the irony is when you take your power back to touch and start walking truth and healing, you probably will get resolution and a settlement and you will win. We've seen it happen in the NARP community over and over and over again. Okay, so, and this is the thing, you know, that dependency where, which is an unavailable, incapable person without capacity to give me love, approval, survival, and security. When you hang on that and fixate on that, never get over that and stay victimized with that. That's what post-traumatic stress disorder is. And what is post-traumatic stress disorder? I promise you it is this. This might shock you, but this is the absolute truth. It means that you haven't turned inwards and healed yourself. No one's home. And it's not anybody else's job as an adult, evolving, growing, thriving. It's nobody else's job. Nobody else can be home for you. It's between you, God, and self. And when you turn inwards and you turn up for yourself, your PTSD will melt away as it did for myself and so many others. So I hope that, you know, in conclusion, I just want to say to you that it is so important to in a stand, I've been talking about understand and in a stand lately, and I'm really committed to in a stand. Understand means that you're trying to convince yourself of something, but your gut, your visceral emotional true self hasn't embodied it. So you're underneath the inner standing, you haven't stood in it. In a stand means I'm going to do the work on myself and I'm going to stand in my inner standing. It's so important to in a stand that it hasn't been easy for any of us to just to be able to say, well, okay, I'm going to love, approve and, and, and create my own security and survival. That is, I'm going to try to understand it when we've suffered abusive people. And perhaps this has been your story your whole life. Like I've been abused and I've been put down and I never believed in myself and I didn't know how to be a source to myself. You know, and maybe you've had abuse and put downs in your childhood. And maybe your childhood story was exactly like mine. You had parents that were overprotective and overinvolved and really caring. And they didn't give you the confidence and the power to be your own generative uh, development of abilities and belief in yourself. Many of us who've been narcissistically abused have been through that too. So, you know, there's the inner healing that's needed here. So you can inner stand and stand in love, approval, security, and survival for yourself. Because if we don't, narcissists love what they can do to us. We have a dependency. Okay. So I really want to talk to you about how I can help you with this. And the first way that I can help you with this is my 16 day free course, because that's going to start bringing to you the inner standing of what these gaps are and where you can deeply focus on the subconscious and be able to step into love, approval, survival, and security. 
And this is not just about being able to survive the relationship wounds and the disconnections from a narcissist. It's about really learning how to thrive and be better than you've ever been as a result of this inner development. So, okay, so in that free e-course, there's lots of free goodies and two free e-books and an invitation to a healing workshop with me. And if you are really, really ready to do the work on this, where you wanna get relief and you wanna get your soul and life back really quickly and really powerfully, then I recommend my Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Program because this is the gold standard of how myself and thousands of thrivers in this community have dissolved all of the energetic ties with narcissists and be released into our best and most empowered lives. So I really hope that today has helped you get clarity and granted you the way to heal for real from this. And I just want to say, please remember to subscribe and share this video with somebody who, if you know that they've still got the unhealthy ties and they're still in the trauma. And as always, I look forward to your comments and your questions below. So until the next one, keep smiling, keep healing and keep thriving because there's nothing else to do. Lots of love. Bye-bye.